So I discovered Van Halen in the seventh grade and that experience reminds me of the way people describe their experience whenever they find religion or they're born again. It was just this moment of enlightenment and clarity that this is what I had to do with the rest of my life. And I'm shocked that I ever even graduated high school or got married or held down a decent job because from that point forward, from, from 1984 until the time I was about 28 years old uh, in the late 90s, I was so obsessed with this idea of playing music and playing drums and playing guitar and writing songs and, and being in a band with other musicians and gigging and being in the studio. There was just, I didn't have room for anything else in, in my life. Uh, I was just so completely consumed uh, with the need, the urge to create music. And um, of course I did get married. I did graduate high school and get married. And uh, but, but you have to pay the bills and, and my wife and I in the late 90s we, we had started a, a service business that was fairly physical the labor was fairly physical and of course I was playing drums in about three different bands at the time and uh, began having chest pains whenever I was working and even more troubling I was having chest pains and, and couldn't catch my breath when I was playing the drums which I did fairly aggressively um, I bounced around from one specialist to another for about a year and a half and they finally told me that I have uh, a disease known as HCM, uh, which is an acronym for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's a genetic disease, it's incurable. Um, though many people are treated with defibrillators and pacemakers, that uh, was not an option for me in my particular case. Uh, you may know the disease more as uh, the athlete's disease uh, if you hear these stories of young basketball players or, or um, uh, cross-country runners just dropping dead during training typically the autopsy reveals hypertrophic cardiomyopathy it's a really sneaky disease because while you can be very physically active uh, and seem completely healthy on the outside uh, on the inside you're you're very sick and you're in danger um, of, of dying from the disease so Fortunately, we, we learned pretty early on that I was not at risk for sudden death, that uh, HCM takes many forms, and my particular version of it uh, made it where I was safe from the risk of sudden death syndrome. Um, but nevertheless, I couldn't work, I couldn't play drums anymore, and uh, I was very, very sick. So. Uh, it was a difficult time for us and financially devastating. This was around probably 1997-98. We, we lost our, our business and the home we were trying to buy. Uh, I had to abandon all the music projects I was working on, sell my drum set to help pay for medications and things like that. Uh, and it was, it was tough. We, we eventually bounced back a little bit and I learned how to play guitar better and worked on my songwriting skills and my voice. and. Uh, got back involved playing music just not to the same degree that I had before because of the physical limitations uh, my wife went to nursing school we had two uh, incredible kids Richard and Brennan and uh, everything was was good for a while it was difficult not being able to play music as much as I wanted but I found other creative outlets during that time uh, then in 2010 I woke up one morning feeling really sick and uh, didn't understand what was happening. I was told uh, earlier that the disease probably would just stay the way that it was for the rest of my life. So it was a shock to learn that the disease actually was progressing again. Nobody knows what causes HCM to start or stop or progress. It just kind of rears its ugly head uh, randomly. And so the disease started progressing again, which means there was muscle death taking place in, in my heart. and. Um, we didn't know what to do. We uh, In Arkansas, unfortunately, there's not a lot of information about the disease and uh, we ended up flying to Boston where there's a clinic that specializes in HCM and they uh, told me that I would need a heart transplant, which is, again, it's incredibly rare for someone with HCM to need a heart transplant. It's so rare, in fact, that we couldn't find a transplant center anywhere near where we lived in the South, St. Louis, Dallas, Little Rock, Memphis, uh, we went all over the place and spent a lot of money uh, in 2010 trying to find a place that would list me for transplant as an HCM patient and they just wouldn't do it. They'd never heard of such a thing before. 
So it became clear we were going to have to move to the northeastern part of the country where there was a little more information and openness to this idea of uh, transplanting an HCM patient. So uh, we moved about eight times over the course of three years between uh, 2010 and 2013. Uh, my wife had a job as a contract nurse and we were just trying to find a place where not only could I be listed for transplant but that could take care of me uh, and keep me alive until such time as I could get a new heart and a place that could also evaluate and keep up with our kids because with it being a genetic disease we that that was an important aspect to us uh, we thought that was going to be in Springfield in Boston it turned out not to work out so we've landed in Hershey Pennsylvania where I'm actually now on a waiting list at Hershey Medical uh, Center Penn State um, receiving really great care from the doctors here they have a lot of knowledge about the disease uh, they're taking care of, of our kids and um, the doctors say it, it could be another year to two years before I see uh, an opportunity for transplant. I've already been on the list about two years, so who knows uh, where this will end up or how long it will take, but uh, we have a lot of hope that things are going to work out well in the end despite all the obstacles and complications. But it's been a tough time financially and emotionally, and um, uh, we're just trying to hang in there and get through to the other side of this. Along the way in all this, I met the guys in Mental Pause and had the privilege of being their vocalist for about eight months uh, when the band was taking off. And um, I have to say, I've been playing music for 30 years and uh, I don't know if I've ever told the guys this, but it's worth saying. Uh, I don't think I've ever worked with a, a group of more talented uh, musicians. Um, they can be real assholes sometimes. <laughs> so those of you who know them know, uh, but I, I can be an asshole too. So it really worked out very well. And uh, I, I really, I look back on those eight months, even though there were, have been bands that I played in for eight, nine years at various times. Those eight months with those three guys was probably one of the most fulfilling, uh, for me definitely the most um, satisfying in terms of creative output and just uh, the freedom to create and, and to do whatever was coming out. And um, uh, that's, that's something that I'll, I'll cherish for the rest of my life. And uh, it's incredible to me that just from that short period of time, um, we kind of became brothers. And Paul has come into the fold now, and I've never even met him face to face. And uh, I just feel like he's my brother. And I feel like um, these guys have continued to include me uh, in the creative process. And uh, I'm excited about what's happening for them. Uh, I'm excited that they found Paul and that he uh, fits right in with them. Um, Paul, I would imagine you're a little bit of an asshole too. Um, <laughs> if you're in mental pause, I think you have to be uh, to some degree. But look, I, I, I love these guys. And um, it's very humbling that uh, so many people would show up to uh, participate in this benefit for me and for my family. Um, I'm not going to lie, it, it, it's been an incredibly difficult uh, three years and uh, we finally feel like we're where we're supposed to be and that uh, things are on the right track but it's been a hard uh, expensive road to get here so the fact that all of you are here uh, giving of your time and giving of your resources to help us out I, I just I don't even have words I mean I don't even know what to say it's just um, beyond anything I could have imagined and uh, I, I earlier in my life I was actually um, part of a religion that taught that people were bad that people were um, born corrupted and born evil and that uh, they needed to be redeemed from that and they needed to be changed from that and uh, my experiences throughout this whole period uh, particularly the last three years have shown me the exact opposite of that uh, that people are good. I, 
I, I've only known uh, Kevin and, and Pat and Kevin for, you know, about a year, maybe a little over a year. And um, just the generosity and the goodness and the, um, the camaraderie that they have uh, shown me is, is something that um, speaks to the fact that people are good. And the fact that all of you are here um, enjoying this music, the fact that there are all these bands uh, creating and, and, and putting forth this artistic effort, it, it's just a message, I think, to me, that people are good. People are intrinsically good. And when given a choice, they will do the good thing and that they'll do the right thing. And uh, I so appreciate everybody uh, who's here being good and doing uh, a good thing and uh, doing the right thing for someone who's in need that you've never even met. Um, it'll, this, this uh, uh, event will, I, I wish, so wish that I could be there and I, I wish my family could be there, um, but I'm just restrained from doing that because of my medical condition right now. But uh, just the memory of this and the fact that it happened is something that will stick with me forever. So I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy uh, all the music today. And thank you again for being part of this. I hope to see everyone soon and to meet everyone soon and hopefully uh, someday be able to get up and, and sing uh, side by side with Paul for a couple of songs uh, at a Mental Pause gig. Thanks a lot.